It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you work for an economic consulting firm that helps companies identify economic trends as they happen. As part of analysis, you use Google BigQuery to correlate customer data with the average price of the 100 most common goods sold, including bread, gasoline, milk, and others. The average price of these goods are updated every 30 minutes. You want to make sure this data stays up to date so you can combine it with other data in BigQuery as cheaply as possible. What should you do? So this client is doing analysis of economic data. This data is coming in regularly. And we want to make sure that we are able to integrate the data that is coming in with their current analysis tool, which is Google BigQuery. In analyzing the requirements, the first part says that we need to identify economic trends as they happen. Right? So as they happen seems to indicate that this is a requirement for real-time streaming data. This company is using Big Google BigQuery, which is one of the best possible tools you could uh, have for a large-scale data analysis. And our solution, what we, we choose, has to integrate with BigQuery. The average price of these goods are updated every 30 minutes. So it is not exactly streaming data. Right? It is slightly different. Data is probably accumulated for a period of time, which is 30 minutes, and then you have this data arriving into your system. We have to make sure this data stays up to date so you can combine it with other data and BigQuery. So we need to make sure that whatever solution we choose, we will be able to continue to use BigQuery and also include this new data as part of the queries. We have to do this as cheaply as possible. So anything that incurs additional cost is probably not going to be the first option. With that understood, let's look at the options we have. Option A suggests load the data every 30 minutes into a new partition table in BigQuery. So when you have tables in BigQuery, right, these, these tables could be very, very large with terabytes and terabytes of data. So when you're running these queries, if you had to scan the whole table, it is going to take you a lot of time. Partitions allow you to segment this entire table based on some data, right? based on some information. You separate parts of this huge BigQuery table such that you can say, run this query only on this section. Therefore, partitioning the BigQuery table will speed up the queries that you run. Since we also have to do this as cheaply as possible, we know that BigQuery data storage is very cost effective. I believe it, it comes quite close to what would be um, between nearline and cold line data storage in cloud storage. So it's very cost effective and you can also archive older data in BigQuery itself, such that it doesn't incur your cost with just data that is there that you're not necessarily querying. Since all this data will arrive in BigQuery, now it could also be that the queries are going to be very fast, right? So if you can get these small partitions and it is already a part of BigQuery, which is really performant, the advantage of doing this will be great. So this seems to hit pretty much everything that we need. However, today BigQuery can be partitioned on a few parameters, right? either time or an integer. So you can partition based on days or you can partition based on hour or based on integer. In this case, we are just worried about, we're just looking at the time uh, partition. But within the time partition, until a little while ago, the only thing you could partition on was on a day basis. 
So you can say for each day, create a separate partition. More recently, they also added the ability to partition by the hour. So at the time this question is probably written, the hour early partition was not possible, right? It's a more recent feature. Later, partitioning by hour and by an integer column was added. However, we still do not have the ability to partition by minutes. Since we are only able to partition by the hour, within one partition, therefore we'll probably have two sets of data. Now it does reduce the time for sure, but you will still have to have an additional query or a subquery that filters out which came in the last 30 minutes or which came in the um, you know, more recent 30 minutes. So this does not really suit our requirement very well. It increases the complexity quite a bit. It's still possible to do this, but then the complexity is slightly increased. Now, with these newer features added, this option came close to being the right solution, right? But it just isn't uh, at this point. Based on discussions we've heard, it's likely that BigQuery is going to even allow you to partition by the minute sometime in the future. As of now though, it is not there and therefore this option does not work. However, if that feature does come in that you can partition by the minute, then this would be the best answer. As of now, we are having to eliminate option A. Option B suggests store and update the data in a regional cloud storage bucket and create a federated data source in BigQuery. Now, what is a federated data source? It's a data source that is not BigQuery, but something that BigQuery can connect to and query data as is. Today, there are integrations with Bigtable, Cloud Storage, Google Drive, and Cloud SQL. On Cloud Storage and Google Drive, you need to make sure that the data is in a particular supported format, either Avro, CSV, New Line JSON, um, ORC or Parquet. So if it is in any of these formats and it is on cloud storage, it is possible to integrate BigQuery, the queries that you run in BigQuery with this external data source. There are a couple of cases where you would use the data coming into say some place like cloud storage and before getting into BigQuery or just using it directly. One of them, of course, is if there's a large amount of data and you're using it as an intermediate storage before you clean it up and put it into BigQuery. The other recommended use case would be if you have a small amount of data that is changing quite frequently. So instead of appending into the table and then having to write more complex query to filter out just this new data, you could probably have it in an external source. So if you are using cloud storage as the external source, the federated source, we do know that it's very cost effective when it comes to uh, data storage. We already know now that you can also combine queries in BigQuery with cloud storage as a federated source. And this use case aligns well with the recommended use case of integrating with data that is a small amount of data that is changing quite frequently. Now, if it was streaming data, then probably this wouldn't work, right? You might have to have BigQuery streaming or maybe run it through some other streaming system. But since this is a batch of data coming in every half hour, it suits as well to have this temporarily stored in cloud storage and integrate BigQuery with cloud storage by using a federated source. Therefore, this seems to check off all the requirements we have for this question. However, we haven't seen all the other options, so let's park this one and look at the others. Option C suggests that you store the data in Google Cloud Data Store. Then use Cloud Dataflow to query BigQuery and combine the data pro programmatically with the data stored in 
cloud data store. Now for the first thing, data store is a NoSQL storage. And it, it would take more effort, like you saw, we need to again combine it with say something like Dataflow, which is additional coding, additional management, before we can get it into a reasonable state where we can query fast. And BigQuery being the fastest, if you're not using BigQuery for analytics, then you're probably not making the right choice. Of course, there are cases where you will have to do some transformation and maybe run it through Dataflow. But since we already have a better option, this just doesn't work out well for us. So on all factors, option C does not work for us and we will eliminate that. Option D suggests that we store the data in a file in a regional Google Cloud storage bucket. Then use Google Cloud Dataflow to query BigQuery and combine the data programmatically with the data stored in Google Cloud Storage. Now, here again, we have seen that just storing the data in Cloud Storage is very cost effective. However, using Dataflow again is a roundabout unnecessary step. Why would we do all this extra work given that BigQuery can directly run federated queries on cloud storage? Therefore, option D also does not work for us and we will eliminate that. Finally, the best option therefore we have is to take this data that is coming every half an hour, load it onto Google Cloud Storage and run a federated uh, query from BigQuery that combines the data in Google Cloud Storage in one of the uh, supportive formats to have a combined analysis of frequently changing data. Now it's time to subscribe to all the great content we've got lined up for you to learn Google Cloud and to help you with the certifications. Thank you.